Hello, I am Jack, and I am part of the Suds Buds, one of the groups tasked with creating a bubble blowing machine for Fed. I'm going to start by walking through how we use the design cycle, then pass the torch to my teammates to talk about some of our challenges, how we did it at Fed, what we would have done differently, and advice for incoming freshmen. Let's start at the beginning of the design cycle with Ask. When we were assigned the task of creating a bubble blowing machine, we were given almost no guidance on how to design it. Therefore, the first thing we did was look at some patents for bubble blowing machines. Every patent seemed to follow the same pattern of having a wind source that blows towards bubble wands that are constantly rotating through bubble solution. We decided to follow their lead. Next came imagining. We brainstormed some ideas. Some of them were practical, most of them were ridiculous. We tried to create ideas that differ from the patents, but none of them seemed to work as well as the already established idea. Therefore, we decided to scrap all of the ideas except the one that was similar to the patents. Because we chose to use wind power only, we needed a way to spin the wheel only using the wind. Based on our research, we chose to turn the wheel into a wind turbine of sorts. Another issue we had was finding a way to change the size of the bubbles. We ended up doing this by incorporating multiple arms into the machine. From here, we really began to plan. We created more detailed diagrams of our designs, as seen in the previous slide, and started deciding what materials we would need. Andres already had a fan, so we just needed the materials for the machine itself. We decided upon cheap wood to build most of the frame, as well as paint sticks, bubble wands, and door hinges for the rest. Next, we created. The first model we had was a prototype built out of connects and pipe cleaners. The pipe cleaners worked so well that we substituted them for the bubble wands. From here, we began to build the final design. After building the first arm, we realized that the axle that we chose to spin the wheel would be too tight, so we scrapped the model and used a looser axle. We built both arms and then attached them to the frame with hinges so we could move them up and down. Also, we put the fan on an adjustable surface so it could be moved to blow the bubbles in the best way possible. Lastly, we made the bubble solution and tested it. Luckily, everything worked perfectly. Unfortunately, the basin that held our solution had a leak, so we had to wrap it in garbage bags to prevent the solution from getting everywhere. Hello, I am Julian, and I will be talking about our design challenges. Along with other restrictions given to us, we were given two challenges. Our machine had to change both the size and the frequency of the bubbles. When pondering the first question, we came up with the idea of using multiple wheels of bubble wands, each with different size wands. At this point, we had to come up with a way of switching out one wheel for the other. Our first instinct was to have all the wheels lined up next to each other and move the fan, but instead of moving the fan, we decided it was best to move the wands by rotating them on a hinge up and down as to which wand we needed at that moment. This can be seen in both the prototype and the final model. We spent a long time trying to figure out how to solve the problem of different frequencies. This proved to be much more difficult than expected. Our first idea is to slow down the fan, but in the rules, we cannot change the speed of the fan. We thought that we should just adjust the distance of the fan from the wheels. When we tried this, the machine, it just, it didn't blow out the bubbles. So eventually, we ran out of time and decided that we would have to skip this final challenge. We ran into some unexpected challenges. First, we needed to find a way to rotate the wheel of bubble wands only using wind. We turned the wheel into a mini wind turbine, much like a pinwheel, to make this work. Next, our axle wheel would not turn easily enough. We were using a ball bearing that had too much friction for the wind to blow it. We switched the axles out for connects pieces, which worked much better. Lastly, our basin had a leak and we could not find the source, so we wrapped the bottom in duct tape and wrapped the whole thing in trash bags. Hey, I'm Andres, and I'm going to talk about how our machine fared in the competition, as well as what we would have done differently. So when we got to Fed, we set up our machine and tested it for a while to make sure that it worked, and then we waited for our competition time. When we were called over, we disassembled our machine as it is in multiple parts, and we transported it to the competition area, where we waited for the previous team to finish. When they were done, we moved our machine into the competition area, and this is where our first problem came in. Because our machine is made of three separate parts, the basin, the fan, and the frame, we had to reassemble it at the competition area. However, we did not set up the fan properly, and after they asked us some questions, we started the machine with the small wheel down and nothing happened. Uh, we figured that it had something to do with putting too much solution in the basin, so we tried to move on to the big wheel. And although this worked slightly better, it still didn't blow as well as our test. After moving back to our presentation table, we realized our mistake and we set up the fan properly, and we tested it and it worked great again. Uh, at the award ceremony, we didn't place or get an honorable mention. Unfortunately, the scoreboard did not work properly either for the bubble blowers, so none of us got to see our scores. Aside from setting up the fan wrong, I think we did pretty well. We had different sized bubbles, we had a creative solution to the problem, and we only used wind power. Upon transporting the machine back to the, my dorm, I tripped on the very first step of the building and accidentally destroyed our bubble blower. There were a few things we would have done differently. We did not manage our time very well in the earlier phases of creating the machine. We kept putting off the work until our next meeting, um, and we should have done more tests so that when we had presented in the competition, we would have known that the error wasn't with the soap 
in the basin, but instead it was because of misplacing the fan. Hello, I'm Muzna and I will be giving advice to next year freshmen. My first and most important tip is to have fun. Although this is work and should be taken seriously, try to enjoy yourself while making the project. Secondly, pick a project that you are interested in. You will be working for the entire semester researching and creating the project. So be sure that you have some interest in the topic. Thirdly, manage your time. Give yourself enough time to make many different modules and try many different solutions to the problems. If you wait too long, you may not have enough time to fix any mistakes in your design. Lastly, if you print out a poster for FEDD, bring a blank trifle to attach to it. We did not and ended up tapping the poster to the edge of the table. Overall, the FEDD was a great experience. We learned a lot about solving problems, collaboration, working in restricted time and within a budget. Even though we ran into some roadblocks, something worked out and we all are proud of what we accomplished. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and if you want a more detailed description of everything, go to thesudbuds.weebly.com. That's without an S, thesudbuds.weebly.com.